right, welcome everyone. In this video, we have a 15.9 problem. Uh, let's see, I'm back here in, let's see, spring 2015, it looks like, is where this problem comes from. It's problem number five here. The volume in the first octant between the spheres shown to the right is given by, and it looks like we have a, a fill in the blank. So this is back when they were actually doing fill in the blanks, but you could imagine a very similar problem to this as a free response sort of deal, where it says to set up an integral, uh, but do not evaluate uh, a, a triple integral that represents the volume uh, of such a structure here. So kind of what you're thinking about, this almost looks like a, a piece of, you know, those earth diagrams and stuff like this, where they kind of uh, cut up on the earth and they say, okay, here's the mantle, the inner crust, the outer crust, stuff like this, right? So again, we're trying to figure out what is the volume between these spheres. You know, we can think about this as, you know, this is kind of like a gumball. You know, most gumballs are hollow. They're trying to save money and stuff like this. So you want to know what is the volume of just this piece, one-eighth, I guess, of a gumball. All right, so we have a few things going on. First of all, we need to recognize what we're integrating, right? We're trying to find volume. So this would normally be the triple integral of 1 dV. Now you can see though that we've set this up in spherical coordinates. So when we switched into spherical coordinates, remember we have this integration factor that we have to include. And that integration factor is rho squared sine of phi. So again, if we want to find volume, we need to be integrating 1 dV. But when we switch to spherical, we have the rho squared sine phi. That's our integration factor for spherical coordinates. Let's go ahead and think about the setup here, right? Uh, for our rows, again, these you think about as radiuses from the origin. You seem to enter into your region through this curve right here, and you seem to exit through this curve right here. Okay, these are supposed to be spheres, right? We know spheres, and it looks like we have this one's radius one. So a sphere is going to have maybe the equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. Remember, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, that's another way to say rho squared. So therefore, that first one has the equation rho is equal to 1. Again, technically plus or minus, but in this class we only consider the positive rows, positive radiuses. So okay, we seem to enter in through rho equals 1, radius equals 1. So that's our first result. That's how we enter into our region. We always seem to exit our region through this outer sphere. And again, you could do very similar work. And because there's a 3 here, right, you can kind of expect that this is going to be rho equals 3. So that's how we're going to be exiting our region. Now let's go ahead and think about our phi values, right? How does phi range? Remember, phi equals 0 is pointing straight up in the positive z-axis. Here's like phi equals pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. And then after that, right, there is no more structure, right? The, the, our region, because we're only in the first octant, right, uh, it doesn't exist after pi over 2. So therefore, our phi value should go from 0, that one's already given to us, I guess, to pi over 2. Then finally, let's think about our theta values. Remember, theta values start at the positive x-axis. So here is theta equals uh, 0. And then theta equals pi over 6. And then pi over 4. And pi over 3. And then pi over 2. And again, after that, you stop being in the first octant. right? You would kind of start, you would continue rotating around this z-axis. So I think our theta value should go from 0 all the way up to pi over 2. And that right there is the final result. That is the spherical integration or the setup uh, right, for finding the volume in the first octant between these spheres. All right, so there you go. There's an example of a spherical integration problem 15.9 that we've seen on a previous exam. I hope you guys enjoyed. And that's it for chapter 15. Next up, we'll start venturing into chapter 16. I'll show you a few more uh, examples and problems that have shown up on previous exams. I hope to see you then.